First of all, I would like to get down on my knees, tie my hair back and sincerely apologize to Big for always thinking badly of him and calling him sus sus in every episode. Mr. Big, you are the hero we didn't deserve but the hero we needed. Also, second of all, I can't decide who I'm more terrified of right now, Pete or Vegas. I'd say Vegas baby, run don't walk because this man right here has not come to play. No sir. Hello my lovelies, this is BL Fan Edits and we just finished episode 10 of Kin Posh the series. As always, I have lots of thoughts about it, so let's get started with the episode 10 recap and then I will move on to the episode 11 spoilers. This was my face and the face of all the novel readers throughout the episode. The writers changed quite a lot of details and it was a huge pleasant surprise for the novel readers. It was honestly so much more thrilling to watch this episode, especially how they concluded the Tavan story. I'm so impressed with this episode. It was really well executed, gripping and electrifying. The episode continues from the last scene in episode 9 where Vegas has come to Porsche to sneak him away. Vegas the Mega Mind is once again fabricating lies and luring Porsche to go away with him so that they can both prove their innocence. But what he really wants to do is make Kin think that Porsche is really a traitor, have him come after Porsche and kill him like he killed Tavan once, and reflect upon how weak of a leader and person he is, that everyone can easily deceive him. Once he is weak, Vegas can easily take over the leader position. But what Vegas doesn't know is that Kin has a plan of exposing Vegas and Tavan all along, and Arm and Pete are currently working on it. Porsche asks Vegas how can he trust his words, to which Vegas sincerely replied that no matter how bad he is, he will never hurt the feelings of the person he loves. Porsche being the newly ordained twink that he is, innocently believes that every Tom, Dick and Harry is in love with him. And so he believes Vegas' words and decides to escape prison with mastermind mafia Vegas. As they were escaping, Pete comes in to stop them. The fight between Pete and Porsche is honestly heartbreaking to see. These are two best friends who have always supported each other and had each other's backs. But today they are standing on opposite footing. One is trying to do his duty while the other is trying to fight for his freedom. I think if Vegas wasn't there, Pete would have told Porsche about Ken's plan. But he couldn't do that because of Vegas. Porsche manages to defeat Pete and was about to escape when Kin stops Porsche by pointing his two guns at him. Porsche retaliates by pointing his gun at Kin too. Kin came here to explain the plan to Porsche but I think it's too little too late. Porsche should have been in on the plan since the beginning considering he is Kin's head bodyguard and also his partner. But I also understand that Kin didn't tell Porsche because he knew that Vegas and Tavan were using Porsche as a pawn and if Porsche was in on Kin's scheme, it would jeopardize the whole plan to take those two down. Porsche puts his gun away and asks Kin to trust him. Kin's love for Porsche knows no bounds. This is a man who has taken a bullet for Porsche. He would never ever control Porsche, he is too soft for him. And so he lets Porsche go. This is also a sign to show Porsche that he trusts him wholeheartedly. In the next scene, we see Kim and Che adoringly sleeping together after Che's confession last night. Kim is looking so freaking hot right now. Look at him, his face is just perfect. Honestly, it reminds me of how I used to sleep hugging my cute little teddy bear as a child. Che is looking exactly like that small teddy bear in Kim's arms. Kim asks Che why he was pre pretending to be asleep. Che says that if he looks at Kim, he will cry. This small sentence is so emotional, I had a sudden lump in my throat when I heard it. Che has one-sidedly loved Kim for a long time, and for Kim to accept his feelings is a huge deal for him. He confesses to Kim and asks Kim if he loves him back. Kim, like the true kitty sweat sibling that he is, deflects the question and asks Che to get some food for him. <laughs> As they are eating, the doorbell rings. Che goes to answer the door and finds unknown men trying to kidnap him. There is one thing to note here is that Kim was planning to bail on Che by writing a note and leaving, possibly because he is still unclear about the situation between his father and Che's parents, 
he can't fully commit to Che unless he finds out the whole truth. But then Che gets kidnapped. Kim and Che put up a good fight but unfortunately they were outnumbered. Kim calls his brother Kin to ask him what the hell is going on at the house and also to tell him that Che is kidnapped. At the house, Tavin is trying to deceive Ken once again by giving him a fake hard drive with no information about the Italians whatsoever. My new lord and savior Big interrupts him and calls out his bluff by saying that this is another one of his gambits to deflect Ken from the real scheme that he's planning in the background. They were trying to access the hard drive when Pete enters the room. Pete proposes that he goes to Vegas' secret lair to find out the proof of his malpractices and get redemption for his best friend Porsche. Kin is skeptical of Pete's plan because he got caught so many times before. But Pete's determination and his fearless eyes convinces Kin that he will be able to execute the plan. Vegas is giving an Oscar-worthy performance trying to convince Porsche that they need to hide for a while and figure out how they will find proof of their innocence. Porsche says before they do any of that, he needs to go and see his brother because he doesn't know when next he'll be able to see him. They go to the house and find out that Che has been kidnapped and there is a message on the phone to go to an old warehouse. Vegas is confused AF at this moment because this is not part of his plan. Porsche is fuming right now and immediately goes to find his brother. Pete reaches the second family's house dressed undercover as a delivery person. He is able to sneak into Vegas' secret room without raising any suspicion. When he enters the room, he finds some toys that are sitting there waiting to be used on him. Pete picks up his favorite toy, the ball gag, and imagines a million different scenarios of Vegas using it on him and making him scream with pleasure. After the initial ball gag distraction, he remembers he's here right now on a different mission and gets into Vegas' computer. He finds out that all the files containing proof of Vegas' betrayal towards the main family are all in the system and sends it to Arm. Angry and worried Porsche reaches the warehouse and looks for Che. He finds Che on the floor tied up and passed out. As he approaches Jay, he is surrounded by two gunmen pointing the gun at him. Tavan suddenly appears from behind and Porsche's gun is taken away by one of the gunmen. Now we are about to witness the end of the Tavan saga, but before that we will witness Mad Dog Tavan's insanity and pitiful unreciprocated love towards Vegas. Tavan hits Jay to provoke Porsche's anger. The helplessness in Porsche's eyes when Tavan was hitting Jay made my heart weep. Apo's acting skills are truly amazing. His beautiful eyes convey so many complicated emotions with so much ease. If Porsche's eyes could shoot bullets, Tavan would have been dead on the floor right about now. As Tavan is trying to rile up Porsche, Vegas suddenly appears with a face that says, I'm in no mood for bullshit and I'm done pretending in front of these peasants. Porsche is initially relieved to see Vegas as he thinks Vegas has come here to save Porsche and Che. But in reality, Vegas is here to end Tavan for straying away from the plan and frame Porsche of being the real mole. On the other hand, Pete tells Kin that Tavan is not working alone with Vegas and that there is one more person helping him. As Pete is about to find out who that person is, suddenly someone points a gun at him. And surprise, surprise, it's Ken, the real mole. This was a huge kick in the face because nobody and their mother expected Ken to turn out to be the mole. I'm a massive Perth fan and I'm super sad to witness what's going to happen to Ken now. Perth, baby please next time choose a role where I can swoon over you and not have to see your face sitting on top of the dining table like a Christmas turkey. Vegas gives a tight smack to Tavan and Tavan folds like a cheap suit. Tavan's voice also changes and he behaves like Vegas' pet kitten. He asks in a tiny voice, Master Vegas, what did I do wrong? I was trying to help you. As he says this, Porsche's eyes widen and he realizes what an absolute fool he has been to trust Vegas. Tavan tells Vegas that he had to kidnap Che because Kin won't tell him anything and he always keeps his secrets hidden from him. He also said that Ken would only tell his secrets to his closed ones like Porsche. He asks Vegas if he also cares about Porsche. 
Vegas denies it and brings Tavon closer to him as if to kiss him. Not gonna lie, the chemistry between Vegas and Tavon is so hot right now, I wish they would just furiously make out with each other one last time. But Vegas pushes him fiercely and shouts at him that this wasn't the effing plan. Porsche is gobsmacked at this moment and he can't believe that he's witnessing something so crazy. He asks Porsche what the hell is this all about? How can he do something like this to his own cousin and his own family? Oh my god, the look Vegas gives him? He's too hot for this. Too freaking hot. Vegas is in no mood to take any crap from Porsche right now and his true colors come out in front of him. Vegas says the filthy main family is nothing to him and he doesn't give a flying F about them. Porsche is shocked and disappointed to hear this and calls him a jerk. To Vegas, this is not an insult because he knows he's a massive jerk. He's laughing at Porsche's foolishness for not being able to figure it out sooner. Vegas also tells Porsche that he has been giving information to the Italians and Yakuza's for a long time now and his plan would have succeeded if Tavon didn't meddle and F it all up. He tells Porsche that his new plan is to frame him and fabricate proof that linked Porsche with the Yakuza's and the Italians. He will tell Ken that Porsche was scared of getting caught and therefore he kidnaps Tavon to frame him instead and then runs off with his brother. Ken will look like a fool for trusting Porsche and no one will respect him. But luckily, Vegas will know of this plan beforehand and will capture Porsche and become the hero of the whole saga. What Vegas doesn't know at this point is that Kin and Pete are already working in the background to find proof of Vegas' association with the Yakuza's and the Italians. Tavon behind is in his own world of rainbows and butterflies. As much as I don't want to, I really find him pitiful right now. He fell in love with the wrong person and got played like a fiddle. He is defending his love for Vegas till the end, and even after being physically and mentally abused by Vegas, he still has hope that Vegas will love him back and marry him. Tavon goes and hugs Vegas and asks him to run away with him. Honestly, Vegas' schlick game has to be top-notch for making Tavon so mindlessly crazy about him. Vegas kisses Tavon's forehead and shoots him. The betrayal in Tavon's eyes is honestly heartbreaking to see. Vegas then turns around to shoot Porsche, but suddenly Kim, Big and the main family's bodyguards are here. Vegas, realizing that his plan has completely failed, figures out quickly that the safest option right now would be to run away. And he does exactly that. Big comes to Porsche's rescue and unties him first. Then comes the moment that will make you shed tears of regret because you doubted this beautiful selfless man who not once confessed his unrequited love towards Kin and just stayed quietly beside him. This is a man who is willing to sacrifice his own life just so that Kin can be happy. Big needs a standing ovation and a formal apology letter from all of us. Porsche asks Kim to take Che away when Tavan suddenly woke up. It turns out he was wearing a bulletproof vest. A fight ensues between Tavon and Porsche. Porsche is still tied up and Tavon picks up a gun to shoot Porsche. As the shot is fired, Big shields Porsche and ends up dying to save Porsche. The last words out of his mouth were, Kunken loves you very much Porsche, take care of him. This statement was like a knife in my chest. It really hurt to see Big thinking about his love kin even as he took his last breath. Fly high, King. We are all so proud of you. Kin comes in when the show is almost over. I'm not sure what he was doing coming in so late. Maybe he had a sudden urge to poo at the last minute and had to go all the way up to his room to take a massive dump before he sets out to complete the mission. It always ends up happening with me whenever I have an important appointment to attend. Nevertheless, the man is here. He asked Tavan to drop the gun. Tavon says it's all Porsche's plan, to which Ken replies that he always knew that it was all Tavon's doing. Tavon says he loves Ken, to which Porsche replies that he's bullshitting because earlier he said he loves Vegas. Hearing Vegas' name, the mad dog inside Tavon was awake again. His delusional ass is still thinking that Vegas is waiting for him. Porsche says Vegas just used you and who would want to be with a selfish guy like you? Tavon replied saying that Vegas loves Tavon and that he will marry him. We see a flashback of Vegas grooming Tavon and making him believe that he loves Tavon and will marry him. 
To be fair, Vegas and Tavan are looking a little too good together. I mean, there is chemistry for sure. Vegas, please stop slutting around and go to your husband. He's waiting for you to try all kinds of stuff on him. Don't waste your time on vanilla ice cream when coffee and donut ice cream is waiting for you in the sex dungeon. Go to your own man. Go, go. When Tavan realizes that Vegas is in fact not coming to save him, he plays his last card. He switches on the timer on the bombs that he had placed all over the warehouse, points the gun towards himself and shoots it. Tavan is dead. Good job, Tavan. You served looks, you served crazy, and you served sexy. I would have liked you if you had not kicked and hit Jay, but unfortunately, I did end up hating you in the end. Porsche and Kin escaped hand in hand before the warehouse burst into flames. We see Kin smoking for the first time in the entire show, and I must say he's looking hot with triple T's. He looks like Al Pacino here, but broader and sexier. I feel like Kin doesn't show much emotion, but he's pretty upset about Big's death. Big was his trusted right hand man for a long time before Porsche came into the picture. Big always stayed by his side. It's one of the reasons Kin starts smoking and will continue to smoke throughout the series. Kin asks for the safety of his brother Kim. Arm replies that he's safe. Kin is visibly relieved after hearing that. Porsche, on the other hand, is finding it hard to explain to Jay what this mess was all about. He's feeling remorseful and guilty about not being able to protect Jay. He hates that his job has put Jay in danger. Jay is upset with Porsche for involving himself in a dangerous job like this and goes away without giving Porsche a chance to explain. Porsche asks Kin if what he said inside was true that he knew about Tavan and Vegas since before. Kin replied that he knew that they were in contact since before and Pete has also found proof of this. Kin said he came to tell Porsche about the plan in prison but he ran away. Porsche is upset by the statement and rightly smacks Kin on his head. Kin then makes a confused expression. I think he's thinking that he's forgetting something, like something was left behind. I think Ken needs to stop smoking and start eating almonds or something because he has serious memory problems. Then we come to the most important part of the whole episode. Vegas has found Pete in his lair and has tied him up. Vegas is already upset and ashamed that he lost to Ken once again. So his plan is to release all his anger out on Pete. The way Pete is smiling at Vegas is sending chills down my spine. This man is really so unpredictable. I know for sure that he's scared right now but would rather die than show Vegas that he's afraid of him. And so he smiles frighteningly at Vegas. Pete's hysterical laugh here is like a hyena. Because when hyenas laugh, we think they are laughing but in reality they are warning their enemies to stay away from them or else they will launch an attack. Pete's laugh here is not laughing at all. He's throwing Vegas off his game and trying to intimidate him. He's making it known that he's not afraid of Vegas, and Vegas might be able to break his body but he will never be able to touch his spirit. Vegas Pete shippers, please don't think Pete is enjoying this right now. That part comes way way later. Right now Pete hates Vegas. Vegas might do whatever he likes with Pete because he's tied up, but it doesn't mean that Pete is enjoying it. Right now he hates Vegas with every fiber of his being, and same goes for Vegas. Even if he takes Pete by force, there is no feeling involved. He's trying to crush Pete's spirit. The way they are looking into each other's eyes here, they both know there is something there. A tiny hint of light among all this darkness. It doesn't help that Pete is looking super hot, submissive and breathable in this moment. Vegas must be so turned on looking at him like this. Even after getting his eggs cooked, Pete is still smiling at Vegas, which angers him even more and he does it again. When Vegas asked Pete if he wanted it one more time, it really felt like they are a sub-dom S&M couple because Pete also smiled when Vegas asked him, hinting that, yes, he wanted more. <laughs> On the other hand, Vegas' dad killed Ken for colluding with Vegas and also because he wanted something to offer to the main family in exchange for Vegas' life. He can now easily blame Ken for every single thing and save Vegas from all the accusations. At the main house next morning, Khun Khan serves up lunch in the form of Ken's severed head. Thana Khun once again had the only normal reaction to seeing the head. 
kin and kun kon on the other hand made a face like it was unappetizing to them but they still eat it if they were really really hungry <laughs> anyway kun kon was somehow able to sort the mess out that vegas created kin is smoking on his room's balcony when porsche comes in kin asks porsche that he needs to apologize to kin about what happened porsche on the other hand is expecting kin to apologize to him instead as the bickering continued between the two, Kin had ultimately had enough of that beautiful mouth talking non-stop. So he grabs Porsche by his collar and kisses him hard, catching Porsche off guard. Not gonna lie, my heart stopped for a second when he did that. These two will ultimately be the death of me, I'm sure. Porsche kisses Kin back and hugs him. After that, they indulge themselves in some dirty dancing that goes on all night long. In the morning, Porsche invites Kin into his personal gas chamber and gives him a taste of the extra fermented somtum he had last night. I'm not sure why Kin looks unhappy with the taste. Somtum is supposed to be very healthy for your gut. Porsche gas blast seems to have triggered Kin's memory and he remembers that he's forgetting something. I mean, what's the point of remembering that you forgot something? I don't get it. It's like when a teacher asks for your homework and you say that you did it but you left it at home. I mean, what's the freaking point? And Porsche, you, damn you, you got some schlong and you forgot about your best friend who risks his life for you? You sure are a shitty friend. Don't even get me started on Ken. Anyone signing the petition with me to make Vegas the new mafia boss? Anyway, this is where the episode ends. This episode was honestly so much better and entertaining than the novel. I had my jaw drop throughout the episode. The next episode is going to be even more exciting with all the Vegas beat action coming up. Now let's move on to the episode 11 spoilers. Kun Kon hosts a party in honor of Kin and Porsche as they were able to win over evil guy Tavan and solve the mystery of sharing information with the Italians. Something happened at the party and Tanakun is slightly hurt. Drama queen Tanakun asks for the doctor immediately. A handsome doctor comes after some time and Tanakun has immediately fallen in love with him. Tanakun is doing all sorts of antics to attract the doctor to him. Porsche and Kin find this extremely hilarious. The doctor does a check up on Tanakun and gets up to leave, but Tanakun asks him to stay for dinner. The doctor refuses, so Tanakun comes up with an excuse that Porsche's brother Che is also sick, so the doctor should check him out as well. It turns out that Che was in Kim's side of the house. Porsche, Kin, the doctor, and Tanakun all go to Kim's room and find Che sleeping soundly in Kim's arms. Che is still a bit upset with Porsche, so he doesn't look in Porsche's direction. Che resists being examined by the doctor, but Tanakun insists that Che needs to be checked thoroughly. After treating Che, the handsome doctor takes his leave and Tanakun is upset again. Kin is called in for a meeting with Kun Kon. They need to decide what to do with the Vegas issue. After pondering for a bit, they decided that they need to wait and see what the next move of Vegas will be and then catch him red-handed in the act because even if they collect any evidence, the secondary family will come up with one excuse or the other to refute all the claims made against him. Coming back to Vegas and Pete, Vegas has to take a back seat for a bit and lay low until the situation dies down. He moves Pete to his own bedroom and ties one of his hands to a long thick chain. Pete can move all over the room as well as go to the bathroom but one of his wrists will always be tied with the chain. In Vegas's mind, Pete is a good escape to vent all his anger out. He is upset over his failed plan and him being a continued disappointment to his evil dad. Vegas also thinks that hurting Pete is like hurting his boss. The more arrogant Pete is, the more Vegas feels like torturing him to make him go down on his knees and beg for his life. The more Pete defies him, the more Vegas wants to strip him of his dignity and make him surrender. I'm skipping the smut part of the novel but basically Vegas does it with Pete. That leaves Pete shocked and confused and hurt. Pete also has a tattoo on him that is only visible when he's nude. Vegas will become obsessed with this tattoo. The next day when Pete wakes up, Vegas offers him some water. Pete refuses to drink it and asks Vegas to kill him. Vegas said he will kill Pete but he still wants him to suffer. 
so he will keep him around for a bit more time. Pete starts hurling abuses at Vegas and compares him to Ken and points out what a loser he is in front of Ken. This constant insult and comparison riles up Vegas and his eyes are bloodshot with anger. Vegas does it again with Pete to teach him a lesson. Vegas will also refer Pete as his own personal dog. The term dog will be etched in Pete's mind and it will never leave him. He keeps bringing this insult up later in their relationship, making Vegas feels, feel embarrassed and ashamed for using that term for him. Vegas will keep apologizing later for calling him a dog. After the second round, Pete goes into the bathroom to take a shower and surprise surprise Vegas is following him in the shower to do it for the third time. Pete collapses after that and he is running a fever. Vegas washes his body and tucks him in bed. Pete sleeps soundly and dreams of his grandmother in the village. Meanwhile, Vegas is giving him a sponge bath and putting the cool gel back on his head to bring his fever down. When Pete wakes up, he sees that there is a food bowl and some medicines kept on the side table. Pete takes the medicines and eats the food. Pete decides here that he must come out of this alive. He must survive in order to kill this bastard Vegas. Pete has a renewed sense of energy when he thinks about getting his revenge on Vegas. Pete spends the whole day sleeping and recovering from yesterday. When he woke up in the evening, there is a huge commotion downstairs. Khun Khan is slapping Vegas left right center and shouting at him for being such a useless son. He even insults Macau and says that both his sons are useless pieces of shits. After hearing this, Pete is a bit scared because now he doesn't know what mood Vegas will be in when he comes up to the room. Ken and Porsche are in the car coming back from a party at Yoke's bar. When Ken said that he keeps forgetting something and he's trying to remember who he is forgetting. Porsche says that if he dares remember someone else then Porsche will ask Pete and Arm to teach him a lesson. As soon as Ken hears Pete's name he remembers that he forgot about Pete and now he is panicking. Suddenly Thanakun comes in the picture and scolds Porsche and Ken that they went alone to the party and all the bodyguards have gone home for vacation so he is very bored at home alone. This is when Ken felt relief because he thought Pete has gone on a vacation to his hometown as he needed a break after everything that happened. Now although Ken and Porsche are happy in their relationship, Ken goes out every evening and comes late at night. Porsche still wonders can Ken be satisfied by just having him in his life or will he go back to his old norms? This feeling has generated a bit of insecurity and anger in Porsche's mind. Porsche shares this insecurity with his friends who suggested that Porsche should change his appearance a bit and try to make himself look cute instead of macho. So they take Porsche shopping and buy him all the cute and elegant clothes. Porsche also goes to a salon and gets a makeover to make his features look soft and his haircut also makes him look younger and cuter. Porsche goes with his friends to Jade's bar after that and surprise surprise, Kin has hosted a huge birthday party for him. Turns out Kin used to go out at night to prepare for Porsche's birthday surprise. He actually took cake making classes at night and made a huge birthday cake for Porsche. Kin also compliments Porsche for looking so cute and adorable tonight. Pete on the other hand is left alone in the room during the days. The entire day Pete kept thinking about ways to escape but there is no way to do it. At night Vegas comes home drunk and collapses on the bed beside Pete. Pete says to Vegas now he understands why everyone hates him. His character is so unpredictable and he has a bad personality. Pete says he hates him with all his being. Vegas smiles and says that's the way it should be. Everyone should hate and resent me. Even my own dad hates me. Vegas continues, do you know my father? Do you know how my heart hurts? Since I was little I have always been scolded and cursed all the time. Pete pressed his lips. He looked at Vegas. His eyes were empty but he is blinking constantly as if to stop tears from flowing. Pete looks away from him. His own heart starts to shake a little. Vegas continues to ramble. Always comparing myself to Ken. That's how I discovered that I'm not a good guy. What would it feel like to be part of the first family? I was born to be part of the second family. What is my fault for being the second? 
Hearing all this, Pete finally starts to understand Vegas's backstory and what led him to become like this. Vegas and Macau were only objects to his dad, something to be used and abused. Vegas continued pouring his heart out to Pete and Pete also responded to Vegas, giving him gentle affirmations. After this, Vegas and Pete flirt a little and Vegas admits for the first time that he finds Pete really cute and attractive. The whole night, Pete kept thinking of ways to kill Vegas, but there is a slight tinge in his heart that also feels bad for him. I don't know where the next episode will end or how much of the Vegas Pete story will they squeeze in one episode. But what I am reflecting after watching this episode is that the screenwriters have made every character grey. Like you will not completely fall in love with any one character, nor be able to hate any character wholeheartedly. I am pretty sure the next episode will be exciting and nerve wracking as usual. Please leave your thoughts about this episode in the comment section below. And I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye!